Workflows can make or break your localization process. How to ensure your projects stay efficient and scalable. Today, we are looking at Localize and we will see how they implemented workflows, how they work and what to keep in mind when implementing it. So stay tuned and look, check it out. Welcome back. Today, we're joined by Luke Vella, Staff Product Manager at Localize, who leads the development of workflows. Luke, workflows have been around in localization tools for a while. What made Localize rethink how they should be designed? Hey, Jan, thank you for having me, first of all. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so, yes, you're right. Like Workflows has been around, and actually, like Localize did have a way, uh, multiple ways of, of how to automate kind of like your localization processes. Um, but I think this was kind of the, the main trigger was that, um, hey, we've got all of these kind of automation possibilities. They're spread around in the product. Um, wouldn't be great if there's a single source, a single place where kind of project managers, localization managers can go to and kind of, you know, uh, create a, a centralized uh, process. Um, I think this is what kind of kicked off the the, the, the conversation, really, um, which then led to kind of a whole series of discussions with customers to see how can we get this off the ground. You know, it's it, from the outset the workflow. You know, multi steps. It's it all looks very complex, um, uh, but we started breaking it down, and uh, yeah, we 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 got to the first version actually released just uh, a month ago, I think. So this is very very fresh. Um, so this is almost uh, a and, preview yeah. for 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 me for for our visitors. So that that's fantastic. Let's share the Absolutely. screen. Let's let's dive into it. Let's indeed just uh, let's just make sure that you can see my screen. I can. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I can give you a bit of a very very quick intro on what this looks like, right? Um, so naturally, as your typical localization process starts off when the content is is kind of uh, gets its way into into localized right into your TMS. Uh, and so you can create workflows for uh, each project that you can have. You can create one or more. You might want to have, you know, like different uh, la languages that you treat differently, either, you know, a different translation method um, just because of kind of the goals that you have for that language. But for each project, you can create a workflow. And um, here you will notice that there's a, a set of um, uh, templates that you can look for. This is kind of the starting point, right? This is where we, 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 we started noticing when speaking to customers that there's actually quite a common set of translation workflows out there. Uh, even though maybe the, the goal kind of is to cre create a, um, a, a super customizable workflow builder in the future, but this was kind of our, our entry point to say, you know, this is the first version we can ship uh, in a relatively fast um, uh, time. Um, so mm -hmm. if you want to if you want to set up your workflows for your localized projects, you come to workflows, add a workflow, and then you can select um, a workflow template. A typical one that we see a lot of customers use it, using is actually this particular workflow here, where content the AI that one. comes, exactly, the AI-driven but human-in-the-loop um, kind of workflow, right? We're seeing this more and more. And um, yeah, when content kind of comes in, the workflow kind of picks up that content and says, okay, I'm going to first pass it through uh, a translation memory step. Um, this obviously for translations, uh, translation industry folks, like this not, needs no introduction, but maybe there's somebody who's just new to localization and, and, and watching this video. This is when you reuse things you've translated in the past, you know, you avoid translating them again. So we, we keep a memory of this, right? And, and you can apply that so that you have to you you avoid have to you avoid having to translate that with AI or or, or Google Translate or whatever machine translation kind of you go for, uh, which is the next step of the workflow. And then finally, once once kind of the content makes its way through the workflow, once the translations have been completed via AI, um, then we create the workflow creates a review task um, so that you can assign it to your internal reviewers, translators, your third party LSPs. Um, and uh, for for a final review, because before that content is ready to be shipped off. Okay, can can we see a process? Do you do you have something for us to to show us how this actually works 
in reality? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I just uh, set up another workflow before, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, it's this one, uh, before this call here, and I've set it up. Uh, I've set up this workflow to start today. Um, there's, you can set up a whole like set of trigger settings there, and you can also define the translations if you want to work. Do you want this workflow to run on? And I can activate this. Just uh, bear with me. I need to let me let me re redo it. Again. So I am just going to activate the workflow and run it now. And so what this workflow is doing, if we go back to it, it's, it's, it's since I've set it to run now, it's going to take kind of any updates or new additions that I've made um, uh, to, uh, to the project's content. And then it's just going to apply AI MT. Um, uh, in this case, I, I selected Google Translate. So if I go to my tasks dashboard here, I should see Yes, this was, this is a close task, um, that was created by the workflow in the background. So you don't even have to worry about, you know, um, any actions on your end. It just does it in the background. So it created a task to translate my content via Google Translate. Um, and uh, if we, we can look at the scope, we can see these are the keys I had updated before. And it's generated, I think I had it set on Danish, German, et cetera. So this is, this is kind of how it works. It's very, very transparent running in the background. Um, and if I go back to, to the workflow screen, uh, you can also see kind of when it's been, the, uh, when the last trigger date was as well. So, um, that, that's how it works. It's very transparent. It's really, really, it's really simple. Um, there's not much to it really. Um, but. It, it, it does really make it so much simpler and faster for localization managers to not have to worry about creating tasks, you know, running through trans, running content through translation memories, etc. So yeah, that's, Automation that's how it is, is. is what we all drive for. So that is, that is excellent. Um, look what some, some best practices you would recommend somebody new to the system or trying to get hands on workflows. Yes. So I think what I would recommend is that, uh, don't start from the setting up the workflow from the, from the tool, right? Take a step back and look at the business outcomes that you want out of, uh, out of what you want to automate. Is it that you want to automate, you optimize for speed? Is it that you want to optimize for quality? These are all kind of important considerations because, and, and it will make it very, very easy for you to understand which exactly, which type of workflow, um, you want to apply to the content that's being uploaded into your TMS. More practically, what this means is if you want to optimize for speed, maybe an AI driven workflow is more applicable. If you're more focused on quality, maybe you want to retain a human translation aspect. Maybe you want to retain, you know, like a, if, the, these kind of these kind of considerations, but then it's pretty straightforward. You just just go and select the workflow template, and 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 you're good to go. Excellent. Localized workflows today on the show uh, with uh, Luca Vela. We will discuss this feature hopefully in future again because this is evolving. And um, in our next video around this series, we will talk about the AI. Uh, in, the, the improvements of AI and statistics and hopefully see as well how all this connects together with the workflow new feature. Luke, thanks a lot for, for being here with me today and for showing us around. Thank you for having me and it was great. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. Localized workflows bring a structured approach to localization management with templates, automation and AI support. But flexibility is key to getting the most out of them. Next, we'll drive into AI and localization, how it fits into translation processes and workflows and whether it's truly helping translators. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.